Uh, my name is Dr. Moses Koridiare, the president of Calvary Drama Ministries International. I want to specially welcome you to this beautiful YouTube channel where you have the opportunity of watching our movies. I'm talking about the whole movies and the very latest ones. <laughs> You're not only going to watch our normal conventional movies, you have other drama skits. Drama skits that will elevate your soul and that will bless your life. Outside that, we have seminars. Seminars on Bible, seminars on medical talks, different seminars that will be uploaded. Please, we want you to do three things before you leave. One, you will see subscribe icon written in red. Tap on that. Close to it is a bell that uh, once you tap, it will alert you of any new thing coming to this channel. Outside that, we want you to like it, to share it, to comment on it. You can also download it. This is the station below. Kilo de to Jackie Baru, Kilo de to Kilo de to There are two battles for every child of God to fight. Two battles. The battle to stay. And fight and win, and the battle to run away and take cover and continue to fight where you run away to. everywhere I go. I don't understand your action for the past 15 minutes. What is the time now? What, what has that got to do with what is going on here? Now tell me, you are beginning to create a sense of fear in me. What is happening? You should stop it. I won't stop. Oh, don't you know that Aaron Yosinle Oniko Yosimi Ogun that's exactly what I said. Meaning that your supporter and your deliverer, they are not here now. Your pastor and his wife are not here now. I am Oniko Yi, Tiko I will not rest. I will not give up on you. Ah. What is happening? Hey, what is happening? Shut up your mouth! Auntie me, you will not give up on me. In what sense? In the sense that you and your holy son will die today. Yes! 
You must die today. Auntie me, Auntie me, why would you want to take the life of my only son? What, what have I done to warrant your wanting to kill me and see me? Why? Why should you carry a glorious child in your womb for a good nine months successfully? Why should you allow your child to have a glorious star while my own child is a failure? Number three, why will you and your son have a beautiful and bright tomorrow. Why my whole will be better than today. That will be over my dead body. Your dream will never come to pass Why I am still alive. The shiny star of your son will not come to full manifestation. Why I am still alive. Akataba, Akataba. <laughs> Hold it! Who are you? I am Pastor Dixon Anoluapo, and this is my wife, Shade Anoluapo. We are the children of the Most High God. We are the children of the God of the Bible, and we have come here to fight you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Shut up your mouth! Do you know Obatala? Yes, I know Obatala very well. Another name for Obatala is Oshala. He's a god. He's Orisha. He is also known as Oxala in Brazil. You idiots. And I must also add that Obatala was a drunkard. In fact, Odudua snatched his kingdom, he usurped his kingdom because of his drunkenness. Your God, the God that you worship, was a drunkard. He was a drunk. You said that. We didn't say it. Our Jesus is never a drunk. The reflection of God of the Bible is never a drunk. He wants us not to be drunk with wine but to be drunk in the spirit and because we are drunk in the spirit we are able to operate in the spiritual and it opens our eyes to see that all other gods are dead your gods are dead what of Shango, Ogo and Oya? Shango, Shango, Shango was the most useless god I have ever heard of you people here call him Shango, but in Latin America, the fools who are worshipping him there call him Chango, Jokuta, and Bada. He was the royal ancestor of Yoruba kingdom. He was the third alafi of Oyo kingdom. He has numerous manifestations like Ara, Agodo, and Afonja. He was known for his powerful acts. Your Shango is one of the most violent God, violent ruler that has ever ruled. But my Jesus, the God of the Bible, is the Prince of Peace, the Restorer, the Savior, and the Healer. Your Shango destroyed many lives in his numerous blood, battle, and fire arms. Fire, fire, and continuous fire are associated with your Shango. But Jesus, the King of Kings, uses his own blood to heal, to save, and to deliver. He reigned for seven years. But Jesus was still reigning and still reigning and still reigning forever. Some go reign for only seven years. Yes. But Jesus reigned forever. Reign forever. Do you know how your Shango's reign ended? His reign ended as a result of the destruction of his palace by lightning. Do you know that your Shango was a terrible polygamist, marrying other three other wicked gods in place of Oya, Oshun, and Oba? He married three of them. Terrible my God. Jesus never defied himself with any woman. Hallelujah. <laughs> the kingdom of Shango was brought down. 
but the kingdom of the God of the Bible has never been brought down and can never go down. And she is one of the God that you worship. I can never imagine why on earth people worship Eshu. Eshu to us, the Christian, is number one enemy. The good thing about faith is this. The devil that you worship, your Eshu, that you worship, has been brought down under our foot. <laughs> and we can walk and jump over your devil. And that is the reason why we are fighting you now with all authority that Jesus has given to us. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every activities of the devil crumble now in Jesus' name. He has been brought under our feet, and every power, your evil that, that is in you, has been brought under our feet. And we are going to come out now the fire of God. Where are you running to? Where are you running to? We are back in Jesus' name. We want to surrender. To the power above all powers. To the name above all names. We want to stop all our activities in the life of Tony I can see. Praise the Lord. I can see. No more spiritual barrenness. Ah! No more, no more, no more. Eh. What is the broom doing in your hand? Ah! Fire! Mama, so you are evil. You are the one behind my downfall. You are the one behind our walls in this house. Me and my mother. Today, I will show you. I will kill you. I will destroy you with my bare hand. I, I will show you. Uh, no! Uh, no! This one cannot uh, escape. Uh, she cannot escape! Uh, Don't do like many Christians are doing. Why are you trying to fight spiritual battle with physical means? Have you forgotten what the Bible says? That we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities. Why are you now using physical means to fight spiritual battle? It cannot work. What this one need? Is power of the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah! Power of the Holy Spirit! Come down now! In the name of the Lord Jesus! In Fire. the name of the Lord Jesus! Fire. 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 So daddy, mommy, that was how the revelation went. Oh! Praise the Lord! Praise, 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 praise the Lord! Praise the God of the Bible! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, dear mom. Please. Please, dear, dear mom. I beg you in the name of the Lord that you find a place in your heart to forgive me for all my foolishness. Please. Forgive me. You have been a father to me and my mom. You have been a father and a mother to us. I turned my back on the God of the Bible, the only true God, in search of frivolities and vanity. Stand up, stand up, stand up. It is well with you. It is well with you. We don't enjoy you prostrating for us like that. It is well. You are our son. Our beloved son, for that matter. We love you. We are very sure that your coming back home is just a matter of a very short time. Even when you were out there in search of another God, we were busy interceding for you that the God of the Bible will bring you back home. And we thank God you are back. Thank you, Father. You are welcome, son. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you, Dad. You are welcome back. Thank you for you're accepting welcome. the prodigal son. You're, you're welcome, my son. We are welcome. Jesus is the welcome, my son. Jesus. Thank you, Dad. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome back home. Welcome back to the God of the Bible. Thank you. Oh, forever we'll be. We'll be serving this God of the Bible. Thank you.
just here for us to pray after hearing so much about the God of the Bible. We are going to pray in the name of the God of the Bible. And we know that the God of the Bible we answer our prayers and our lives will never remain the same again in Jesus' name. Can I ask a question? Go ahead, brother. Say, ask a question. Sir, I once heard you said that the God of the Quran is not the same as the God of the Bible. But many Christians today, we believe we serve the same God. Are we truly worshipping the same God as the Muslims? Hmm, that's an interesting question. But the answer is an emphatic no. We don't worship the same God in the God of the Muslim. The Muslim worship Allah and we worship God. No, they may call it God, but their own God is different from our own God. The first question I expect you to ask me, Rashidi, is who is Allah? Who is Allah? The Quran has the record that Allah has been in existence even before the prophets. So Allah is not in Muhammad, no. Allah has been in existence before all the prophets. They believe that Allah is the creator of all things. They believe very strongly in the divinity of Allah. They also believe that uh, Allah is omnipotent in science and in the sense that Allah is everywhere. They strongly believe that Allah is one. They believe that Allah does not have a son. They believe that Allah does not have a father or a mother. They believe that Allah is just one. They don't see Allah as existing in free form. As interesting and sweet and surprising this may be to our Christian brothers, because some of those qualities are the same thing with uh, the qualities we know of, of God. But as good as these qualities may be, <laughs> the Allah of the Quran is very, very different from our God, the God of the Bible. Uh, in my search, in my search and what the Holy Spirit told me, apart from my search, the Holy Spirit further confirmed it to me that there are 21, at least 21, 21 differences between the Allah of the Quran and the God of the Bible. 21, one, two, one differences between the Allah of the, Bible, of the, of the Quran and our own God. Number one, Muslims believe in some segment of the Bible, in our own Bible, they believe in some segment of our own Bible. Like uh, they believe so much in the Torah, when you say Torah is the law, the Pentateuch, that is the uh, talking about Genesis, or this, they believe so much in it. They also believe in the Jew. So they believe so much in the in the gospel of our Lord Jesus, the Synoptic Gospel, talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They believe very much in it. They believe in the Psalms. They believe in the Psalm. In other words, they believe in, in G, which is, uh, according to them, is the book of Jesus. They believe in the Torah, that is the law. They believe very much in the, in the Psalms. So these are the, 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 the books they believe in. But that belief no longer holds water. They don't longer believe in, in, those, in those books anymore because they believe that those books have been perverted or polluted. And when you ask a true Muslim, I say, okay, Injil is perverted, Torah is perverted, the Psalm is perverted. When was it perverted? They won't be able to give you a good answer to when it was perverted. They just believe that it was perverted. Was it perverted before the coming of Muhammad? They won't give you a good answer. Was it perverted after the coming of Muhammad? They won't give you a good answer. So, uh, do we not say that uh, people who don't believe, the book who doesn't believe, uh, Muslims who don't believe in our, in our books and say those books are perverted, can we not say we are worshipping the same God with them? It's not possible. 
those who don't be, people who don't believe in, in our books and they say that our, our books are perverted and polluted and corrupted. That's what they will tell you. They say, oh, no, even those books that they believe in, they say, well, they are, they are perverted and corrupted. <laughs> so if they are perverted and corrupted, they, don't, they can't tell you when it was perverted. They won't tell you when it was corrupted. But remember, the God of the Bible wants us to believe in the Bible from the very first word in Genesis to the very last word in Revelation. And so people are saying they don't believe in them, they are poverty. And you say they are, we are worshiping the same thing, it's not possible. Muslims, for example, now, Muslims don't believe in the epistles, the epistles of Paul. Do you know one thing? Muslims even believe that Paul is the problem of Christianity. Ask any Muslims. Ah, Paul is the one that is causing problem in Christianity. Because they will tell you that all the books of the of the, the all the epistles and the acts of the apostles, they don't believe in it. They say yeah, the apostles, no, and the epistles, no. They say Paul brought his own thinking into the Bible. That Paul is the one that, that brought strange teachings. So all the epistles go to Muslims. I'm saying very emphatically, ask any of them. All the epistles to Muslims are strange teaching. They are Pauline, they call it Pauline theology. They say Pauline theology is the one that is destroying your Bible. So people who don't believe in such a thing, do we not say that we worship the same God? People who don't believe in very powerful, inspirational books like, like, uh, the, like the epistles, like Ephesians, Corinthians, Romans, People who don't believe in it, and you say we are, we are watching it, the same God? No, we can't, we are not, and we will never watch it the same God with them. Number three points, why you should know that we don't worship the same God with, with the God of, 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 of the Quran. The New Testament believer, the New Testament God of the Bible, does not believe in sacrifice anymore. The sacrifice that we should have done, or the sacrifice that we should do, Jesus has sacrificed for us. Jesus has made our sacrifice. But I want to tell you very emphatically that Muslim sacrifice. And even the sacrifice too, it must, it must follow some rules and regulation. For example, the God of the Quran will never accept any sacrifice when, I mean, some of you go to buy meat in the market and other places. If such meat are to be sacrificed and to be slaughtered, Muslim must sacrifice it. Why do I say sacrifice? You have to take the head, the head of that ram, of that animal, to face the east. It must face the Kaaba. If it does not face the east, that sacrifice is not accepted by Allah. That's one. Then, number two, you must call. You must make a pronouncement before you cut. You say, in a way to Zubi. You must, you, many of you don't know what they say, but I'm telling you what they say. I say, in a way to Zubi. One, face the east. Two, in a way to Zubi. And I'm passing this across to, so I'm sacrificing this. Then another very, very important thing is that you don't just cut anyhow. There's a system of cutting that is sacrifice. That is sacrifice. But the God of the Bible does not require any sacrifice. As a matter of fact, the Jesus of the Bible <laughs> gave himself as a sacrifice. He's not requesting sacrifice from us, but this is sacrifice facing the Kaaba. Another very important point, again, point number four, why I believe and why you too as a Christian should believe that we don't worship the same God is the issue of prayers. Like I'm Christian. I can pray really now. I can pray turning my back from anywhere. I can pray facing any direction. But your prayer, well, they are so-called prayer, is never accepted if you face any other place apart from the East. Check all Muslims. You must face the Kaaba. If you face any other direction apart from the Kaaba, your prayer, will, your so-called prayer, will not be accepted. But thank be to Jesus. I can still like so praise them. Thank be to Jesus. I can turn to any direction and praise them. Are you not telling me that an Allah that accepts prayers only in one direction? And the God of the Bible that accepts prayer 
in any direction, they are the same thing. Definitely, they are not the same thing. The fifth reason why you should know that the God of the Bible is different from the God of the Quran is this. Do you know that most things exist in three forms? Human being exists in three forms. The physical body, the, the, the spirit, and the soul. Water exists in three forms. Solid water, which is ice block. Water itself exists in three forms. Solid water, which is ice block. Normal water, which is liquid water, and gaseous water. Even the this life itself exists in three forms. Life under the head, life above the head, life in the sky. Everything exists in three forms. The same way, the same way the God of the Bible exists in three forms. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are talking about three unity, three gods perfectly united in one. Muslim brother guys, listen to me. You are my friend. Yes, as a Muslim brother, you are my friend. Muslim brother is listening to me. Let me tell you, let me tell you this. We are talking about three individual personalities that are perfectly united in one. <laughs> but Muslims don't believe in Trinity. They don't believe. They don't believe in God the Father. They don't believe in God the Son. They say, where we worship God. Some say, we worship Miriam. All manners of things we hear from them saying. They say, well, we are, this Christian don't worship God. But we don't worship three gods. We worship just like three things exist in three forms. We worship our Lord Jesus. We worship the Holy Spirit. We worship God the Father. And they are perfectly united in one. We worship three God, triune God, three God in one. So, but most not believe in that. They, to them is very blasphemous. To them is very heretic. For someone to say, well, I'm worshiping. How can you be worshiping three God? Because you don't, you don't understand. But I'm telling you that we believe so much in the Trinity. Christianity without Trinity is crisis. Christianity is the life. Christ Trinity is the life of Christianity. Number six, everything about Christianity centers on our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Lord Jesus, our Savior, our Sanctifier, our Healer, our Baptizer, our Coming King, our Comforter. Jesus is all. It's all in all. Everything centers on Jesus. Jesus is coming back to rapture us home. But they don't believe so much in Jesus. We still hear details about the issue of this Jesus. The religion of Islam centers very much about Muhammad. Muhammad, let's say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We still pray for Muhammad till now. We don't pray. We don't pray for Jesus. We ask Jesus to bless us. We don't pray for the peace of God to be upon Jesus anymore because he's the peace of he's the prince of peace. So they say Salah alayhi wa salam. So who is this Muhammad? They believe very much that uh, Muhammad is the first prophet. They say, I mean, they say Muhammad is the last prophet. Now listen to this. This will surprise many Christians. The religion of Islam so much in reference Jesus. They call him Isa ibn Miriam. They call that is Isa, the son of Mary. They call him Kalmatulai. In other words, they say is the word Kalmatulai is. They call him the word of God. <laughs> it should strike you. John chapter one verse one. Talk about Jesus being the word of God. Now they are saying Kalmatulai, Jesus. The word of God. So those are the two things that they use for Jesus, but more that Ibn Miriam, that is Isa, that is Isa, the, 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 the child of Mary. They believe so much about Jesus. They believe in the virgin birth, but they do not believe in the sovereignty of Jesus. They don't believe that Jesus is suffering. <laughs> they believe so much about Mary. Lots about Mary. They believe very, they believe three strong things about Mary that will surprise you. Number one, Mary is the only woman mentioned in the Quran. 
No any other woman was mentioned in the Quran but Mary. Do you know that Mary was mentioned more in the Quran than Jesus himself? As a matter of fact, a whole chapter of the Quran was devoted to Mary. One, no female was, has ever been mentioned in the Quran but Mary. A whole chapter of the Quran was devoted to Mary. And they told me the, the, the name Mary was mentioned in the Quran than even the name Jesus. Most times they talk about Mary, 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 Mary. Mary's name was mentioned more in the Quran than the Bible. That should surprise you. Yet they don't believe, they don't believe that Jesus Christ was the, the savior of the whole world. But they believe to talk so much about Mary. One, a whole chapter was mentioned about her. A whole chapter was devoted to her. Two, a name mentioned more in the Quran than the Bible. But listen to what I'm about to tell you now. Despite all this belief, they never, never, never believe that Jesus Christ is the savior of the whole world. Even though they know that Jesus Christ performed miracles. The, the miracles Jesus performed in the Old Testament, I mean, the, the miracle Jesus performed in the New Testament when he was young, no, no much was mentioned about it. But go and see Quran. You see a lot of miracles that he performed as a child. Yet, they did not see him as a savior. That should surprise you. They do not, my dear, they do not also believe. They, they, they believe very much. Listen to this. They believe very, they believe other four fundamental things about Jesus. Four things. Number one, they, they, they believe very much that Jesus Christ will be coming back again. They believe that Jesus Christ will judge, will be the judge. <laughs> Watch it. They believe very, very strongly that Jesus Christ will come the second time, the second coming of Jesus, and now he will come and fight the war of Gog and Magog that the Bible mentioned. So they believe very much that Jesus Christ will come and fight the Antichrist. <laughs> and fight in the war of Gog and Magog that the Revelation, the Revelation speaks about. They also believe that. So they, they, they so much love Jesus that they, they number three points, I said four things, but they, they so much love Jesus that they believe that Jesus Christ did not die. They believe that Jesus Christ was so powerful, was so energetic, he has every potential and spiritual strength that nobody could kill him. They believe that Jesus Christ was not crucified, that God did not allow his enemies to crucify him. Some, 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 some Muslims, again the difference in this belief, some Muslims even believe that um, Judas Iscariot was the one that was exchanged for Jesus, that God just took him away, that he didn't die, and that he now Jesus Christ did not die, that Jesus Christ will still come back with the world. What, 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 what a serious situation. They believe so much in all these things, but they do not believe in the sovereignty of Jesus. As good as all these that believes are, they miss things all. They do not believe in the sovereignty of Jesus, they do not believe in the deity of Jesus, Especially if you look at the book of Quran chapter chapter 5, we call it Surah, Surah 5. Do you know that Muslims don't believe in crucifixion? They say, well, it's not crucifixion, they say it's crucifixion. Do you know the difference? They say cruci. C-R-U-C-I-F-I-C-T-I-O-N. Crucifixion, that is friction. <laughs> But we know of crucifixion. That is C R U C I F I X I O N. But they say is F I C T I O N. <laughs> what a confusion. But we know that Jesus Christ was crucified. He died for our sins. They do not also believe that Jesus Christ is resurrected. They do not believe in the crucifixion. He did not also believe in the resurrection of Jesus. <laughs> My brother, don't ever join them in saying that the God of the Bible and the God of the Quran are the same. Somebody, 
What what is the basis of our Christianity? If there, if crucifixion if crucifixion is removed and the resurrection is also removed, what are we talking about? So they do not believe in our fundamental. So the God of the Bible can never be the God of the Quran. Christianity is empty without crucifixion, without the deity of Christ, without the agonies of the cross. No cross, no crown. No cross, no crown. But they don't believe in all this. The God of the Bible is symbolized by Jesus Christ. When you're talking about the God of the Bible, you're talking about Jesus Christ. The, the God of the Bible, which is Jesus Christ, did not take part in any war. No, not even a single war. Go and check your record. The book, God of the Bible is the king of peace. Not the, not the king of fighting war. There are a lot of wars and wars and wars that Muhammad fought in his 62 years of sojourn on earth. He spent 62 years on earth and he fought several wars. Jihad. A lot of jihad was fought by Muhammad. But you can never hear that Jesus Christ fought any war. And those wars that Muhammad fought were encouraged by the God of the Quran. So instead of fighting jihad, my Jesus told us Christians that we should never, never fight back, even when we are attacked. <laughs> Can you see that we are not, we are not serving the same God at all? Even when we are attacked, even when they attack us, even when something happens to us, we should never fight back. But the God of the Quran encourages Muhammad to fight jihad. This is in God. No, sir. The God of the Bible throughout his earthly ministry never got married to a single woman. No, 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 no. He was not a polygamist. Not even a monogamist. He never got married to a single woman. No record. The God of the Bible never got married to any woman. But I must tell you this. Muhammad of the Quran married 13 wives. Go and check it. Go and make a finding. 13. Not four. 13 wives. Married. <laughs> so the the religion, their God encourages polygamy. Our God encourages monogamy. The heaven of of uh, of the God of the Quran <laughs> is an heaven, an heaven that they call Al Jannah. They call it Al Jannah. Then the other one, which is El Fire, Jannah. They, they sound the same with Jannah and Al Jannah. But what is in Al Jannah? But before I tell you what is in Algeria, I want to tell you what is in the, in, the, in, the, in the heaven of the God of the Bible. Our heaven is full of joy, where people sing praises, we worship God, adore God. It's a place of complete, total joy and worship in the Holy Spirit. That's how the Bible presents the God of the Bible. Look at the heaven of the God of the Quran. The heaven of the God of Quran is a place that is full of bliss, pleasure, enjoyment. I, I won't mention those enjoyments. I won't mention it for a reason. But you go and search what they call pleasure in their heaven, what they call enjoyment in their heaven. It's not the same thing. It's not the same God. I can pray to the God of the Bible kneeling down. I can pray to the God of the Bible sitting down. I can pray to the God of the Bible standing. I can pray to the God of the Bible anywhere. But the position of prayers to the God of the Quran is specified though. Is specified. You can't pray to the God of the, of the Quran anyhow. They have their specification. As a matter of fact, the specification differs according to their beliefs. Like the specification with the Shiite Muslim is different from the specification for the Sunni, the Sunni Muslim. Now the truth is this, we don't have any specification. I can be praying like, Holy Ghost, fire! Liberty in Kabbalah. They are not the same God. So what I'm saying is that you dare not change the mode of your prayers in Islam, or else that prayers will not be accepted. But I can, I can be in any mode to pray to my Jesus and it will be accepted. The purpose of the coming of Jesus Christ to the world 
is for one. one. There are purposes, but the primary assignment that Jesus came to do in the world, I will tell you that. Many of you don't know the primary assignment. Many of you think that the primary assignment of Jesus is to give you food, is to give you butter and bread. That's, it's just addition. But the primary reason why Jesus Christ came, the primary reason why Jesus Christ came to the world, if you look at the book of John chapter 1, verse 29, he said, Behold, the Lamb of the Lord, which taketh away the sin of the world. That's the purpose. That's the primary purpose. And if you look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, he said, You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. So the primary reason why Jesus Christ came to the world is to save souls of people from sin. But you can never hear Muslims talking about uh, salvation from sin. All the tell is don't commit sin. But the real, the real purpose of why Jesus came is to destroy the power of sin. Give your life to Jesus if you have not done so, so that you make one at last in Jesus' name. Number 11. In contrast to that, making heaven. If you say you are you, how to be a true Muslim, if you want to be a true Muslim, a respected Muslim, a Muslim that God will accept, you have five things. They call them the five pillars of Islam. So the five pillars of Islam. We are talking about Jesus talking about salvation from sin. They are talking about pillars. And those five pillars of Islam, number one, they say, well. The first thing is you must testify that there is no God but Allah. That Shahid Allah, La 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 Wa Shahid Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That you must also testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's one. Then two, you must pray five times a day. You must pray five times a day. You pray. There are five prayers that must be prayed if you you want to you want God to be happy with you. You must pray five times a day. You must pray asuba. You must pray azar. Uh, you must pray lasa. You must pray isha. You must pray you know, five, five, five prayers. So that's number two ten. I'm talk- I was talking about the pillars of Islam. Number one is must you must testify testification. I testify shadow Allah la la la. I shadow Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's one. Then two. You must you must pray five times a day. Then you must give your zakat. What is zakat? That is like tithe. You must give your zakat. Then um, number four, you must go to you must go to uh, Hajj once in your lifetime. Actually, that is not that is not must. The word must is, is wrong. So, but you are expected to go to. Uh, uh, Hajj, pilgrimage, once in your lifetime. Then you must also fast during the Ramadan period. Thirty days you must fast. So when you do this thing, these five pillars, you already you already loved by God. But uh, the Bible says, "By the work of the flesh, I no more prevail." We we believe so much that. Jesus is the Savior. He came to save from sin. Can you see that there are, there are direct opposite things apart? Number 14. You listen to this number 14 very well. And go and make your research. There has never been a prophet anywhere in the world that comes up and says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. No prophet has ever done that. Some of these are prophets. We hear that I don't even know where I'm going. Pray for me. No one does this pray for their purpose. Jesus came out publicly and declared that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. We as Bible say, that's what the Bible says. That Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. And another religion is saying that where well, you don't need to go to heaven through that Jesus. And the God's the same thing? Of course, definitely not. Number 15. The God of the Bible is our Father, our loving Father. Ha, now I can call you God as my Father. Look at what the Bible says. Say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> but no Muslim dare call 
Allah, Father, you dare not try it because you are the servant. A Muslim is the servant of Allah. So he dare not tell you that I'm the son of Allah. And the lady the same, definitely not. And the God the same, definitely not. I can say, God, my father. Oh, God. God is good. He's my father. He's my loving father. But Muslim cannot say, my loving Allah. Allah, Allah is my, Allah is, uh, is, my, is my lover. He's my father. No. Allah, I would, they would rather say, Allah is my Lord. Is, uh, they are servants to Allah. We are children to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. The, the New Testament Christian and the New Testament God of the Bible does not want you to fight for yourself. That's another serious issue, another difference. Serious difference. Say if somebody slapped you by the left, turn your, turn your right. You understand? You should not fight. You should not fight. To buttress this point, look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to 45. Read it right there. So you please pay attention to this. You want to pay attention to this very well. Silent you, pay attention to this. You have asked. You have heard. That it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that cause you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sent rain. That's all right, my dear. Have you gotten that? Christians are supposed to live a sacrificial life. You are not to fight for yourself. You are not to defend yourself. You know, this, the message is changing now. With this all, with this new pet rascal pastor that we have around, they tell you, I will slap him in the Holy Ghost. But is that what the Bible says? So, but you cannot hear something like this. No, 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 no. And I find high and tweet for a tweet. But the New Testament Bible, the New Christian, the the, the New Testament Bible is not a Bible. A, the New Testament Christian is not a Christian of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Too. You can say peace, 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 and peace is what you find. Don't fight. Don't fight. Jesus put it, don't fight. But the God of the Quran encourages holy war. Let me put it this way to you. This point is enough point to make you begin to think if you're a Muslim if you're a Muslim and you're watching me this is a very serious point one, but one is preaching peace, peace and one is preaching war, 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 jihad look at all over the world Badly, in Africa we are battling with Boko Haram Boko Haram everywhere killing, slaughtering, destroying lives <sighs> but the God of the Bible never, never, never preaches war Never preaches war, he preaches peace instead. It is all war, war. The God of the Quran encourages jihad. Do you know the meaning of jihad? Holy war. And you say you are worshiping the same God? You are not. Now listen to this very big difference. The greatest weapon in the Bible is the blood of Jesus blood of Jesus and the mere mention of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, things begin to happen, miracles begin to happen. The blood of Jesus is what cleanses you from sin. The blood of Jesus is what heals you from difficult situations and diseases. The blood of Jesus causes deliverance. Any difficult situation, put the blood of Jesus and you will see things happening. But the Quran is against the blood of Jesus. The Quran speaks against the they, there is nothing they, they, they don't even believe in the blood of Jesus at all. The blood of Jesus amounts to nothing to the to the to the Muslim brother. <laughs> and the blood of Jesus is our weapon. We, we don't have the same God. Hey! Hey! You! Hey! You killed my husband! You caused me pain and perplexity. You left me to labor all alone to raise my child. 
May God never forgive you. Yes! Yes! I treat you like an animal! I treat you like an animal because that is who you are! You are an animal! You are an animal! You are an animal! You are a monkey! You are a monkey! Hey, look at yourself! You are a monkey! You are, you are a gorilla! 